Hi guys, um, just finished Brightstorm and wanted to do a video review straight away. Um, it is obviously a book that is extremely popular at the moment. It's a book that is doing the rounds on Twitter and it's a book that has been voted for the Primary School Book Club Book of the Month. So um, it's one that seems to be very much on the tip of everyone's tongues. Very much a book that is being read by, well, loads of people, but a lot of primary school teachers. Now, I must start by saying I approached this book with a degree of cynicism and that's not because I had any um, preconceptions about the story. I just, it just wasn't the sort of genre that I typically go for in a book. I am somebody that generally likes things that are real, so things that are truly believable. And I tend to focus on books that sort of have that content themselves. However, this is a turning point potentially for me. I absolutely loved it. You shouldn't judge a book by its cover, and that is a, a saying that does ring true. However, if you look very closely at this cover, this is an absolutely beautiful book. Now, anyone that's held this book, anyone that has purchased this book and owns it, will know what I mean. It is a work of art, this book. It is a book that has a truly beautiful cover. It's a book that, on the inside flap, opens up and gives you a map of the story, some of the sort of key aspects of the story, some of the key locations, things that I found myself flipping back to quite a few times throughout the story. But it's a really beautiful book. Now, on to the story. It is a story that focuses around the journey of two children in a skyship. Now that sounds a little bit far-fetched, but let me tell you a bit more about it. So, you've got two children, you've got twins, Arthur and Maudie. They essentially, they essentially have grown up in the household of a father, Ernest Brightstorm, who is an avid explorer. He is a skyship explorer. He's not from the sort of traditional explorer's background, but he's someone that's extremely ambitious, extremely talented, and extremely motivated to explore the far-fetched areas of the universe. Now, Ernest Brightstorm, early in the book, does not return from his mission to reach the third continent, the South Polaris. Now, this is something that has a huge impact on Arthur and Mordy. I repeat, Arthur and Mordy are twins. It has a huge impact on them, not only because they've lost their father and they were in a single parent household, their mother died a long time ago, but not only because they've lost their father, but because it appeared that he had cheated the Explorer's Code on his mission, which meant that they were not going to be paid out any insurance whatsoever. It meant they lost the house. It meant they went to live with two very unpleasant individuals who put them to work and treated them very, very poorly. I'll introduce now, I'll, um, I'll mention that Arthur himself only has one arm. So he finds things very difficult. And his sister, his twin sister, Mordy, has produced an iron arm for him. She's someone that has been very inventive from an early age. She's someone that is... It's very clever, very imaginative, and has those sort of engineering traits. Now, before we go too deep into the story, what I will say is there's some lovely, lovely sort of aspects of this story, which I haven't seen in too many others. I love the fact that the story focuses around two main characters, which are a set of twins. I love the fact that there's a sort of ongoing need to avenge their father's death or find out what has really happened to him. And I love the fact that one of the main characters is is essentially disabled. He is not fully able in terms of his, his body, but he manages to be extremely inventive and find his way around it. Now, essentially, an opportunity arises to escape the new situation that they've found themselves in with the very unpleasant family who have put them to work. The opportunity arises to enter a race to the South Polaris in the Third Continent, joining the crew of Harriet, who is somebody who was a very talented young explorer herself. The opportunity has arisen for Arthur and Mordy to join the crew and race to the third continent. Now, 
whilst most people on the crew are motivated to reach the third continent for the glory of it and the prize fund of it, Arthur is fully motivated to find out what has happened to his father. He doesn't believe that the story is true. He doesn't believe his father would have ever cheated and stolen fuel. He doesn't believe that at all. And the story evolves from there. Now, it is an adventure story. It is an encapsulating race between several several skyships who are trying to get to the third continent. And it turns out being a race between the good guys, Arthur, Mordy, Harriet, their ship, and the not so good guys. Which I don't want to tell you too much about because I would hate to spoil it for you. But along the way, we find that there's an accident to their craft. We find that they encounter kings on the second continent. We find they come across some mysterious animals, the thinking wolves. And there are so many little aspects of this story which really kept it pacey, kept it moving, kept me excited. I felt that while I approached it with some cynicism to start with, I felt that 10, 20 pages in, I was fully hooked. It didn't matter that skyships don't exist. It didn't matter that, that it was dealing with a universe that doesn't, to my knowledge, exist. For me, the story was gripping and I really wanted to know what had happened to Ernest Brightstorm. I wanted Arthur and Mordy to avenge their father's death. I wanted them to bring glory back to the Brightstorm name and I thought that was absolutely fantastic. I think the book towards the end, and again I won't ruin it for you, but I think it does lend itself to possibly a sequel, which would be really exciting. And I think in the same sort of theme as similar videos that I've done, I think there's some key messages that could be taken from this and perhaps brought to the classroom. I thought, first of all, there was the sort of dealing with grief, emotional literacy side of things. These two children, these twins, lost their father and there was that grieving process that they went through. There was a stage of denial, there was a stage of complete refusal, then there was a stage of later on in the book, acceptance. And it, it was quite interesting to see that sort of process take place. That was something that I thought was was quite powerful. I think accepting differences was something that stood out really, really well in that book. I think, as I say, Arthur was physically disabled. However, that wasn't a barrier to him. He learned to overcome those differences. He learned to adapt and make the best of those situations, sometimes using it to his advantage. And I think that's something that could provide a really powerful message to, to pupils through perhaps a PSHE lesson. I think the the sibling relationship, the teamwork, I thought that was lovely throughout this book. I think there were some really good examples of leadership and how, how to work coherently as part of a team. There was some really lovely messages from Harriet, who was the um, essentially the lead explorer of the, the ship that Arthur and Mordy joined, the sky ship there. She did things like, um, she insisted that Everyone called her by her first name. She didn't want that sort of um, hierarchical structure. She wanted everyone to be seen as equal. She insisted on um, on cooking for everyone and letting them rest. And I, I think that was really lovely to see the aspect of teamwork and the understanding that everyone can sort of pull together and have a, a key role and, and work together in that sense. I think something that was also lovely, and I think it's pretty apparent that numbers of females working in engineering type jobs is very low in the UK. It's it's a real employment need. And I really liked how throughout the book there was that almost like it made it cool. It made it really cool that Maudie, a young girl, had that sort of intuitive mind. She was able to to fix things. She wanted to be an engineer. She wanted to go to uni and study that. And I think that was that was really lovely to see. And I think perhaps, you know, if one young girl reads this book and in, is inspired by that story, wouldn't that be wonderful? Many more could be as well. I think there were some messages about the environment that could link itself well to um, sort of habitats units at school. There was um, there was mentions of whale poaching. There was mentions of uh, humans destroying the habitats of the environment, particularly when it came to the um, the third continent towards the end of the book. So there was lots of things we could bring from it there. 
I would also say, and I've posted, um, I've posted a few paragraphs on my Twitter recently. Some of the descriptive language in this book is just phenomenal. The um, the range of adjectives used, the the unusual adjectives used, it's just lovely. And there's so many examples that could be taken from this book, albeit in probably smaller chunks. You know, to show children how they can write in a a really different way when it comes to um, when it comes to setting descriptions without going to the sort of normal go-to phrases. So, yeah, I thought this was a lovely, lovely book. I think, um, yeah, I, I think the um, it's a debut book by Vashti Hardy. It's her first novel, and I'm confident it won't be her last. I must say, I've had some inter Twitter interactions with her as well. She's been absolutely lovely and. Um, I'm really, really pleased to say that this certainly didn't disappoint. I'm so, um, I'm so grateful for all the feedback I've got from you guys. I'm really enjoying doing these book reviews. I, um, I'm going to move on to Cogheart next. That's a book that I've heard good things about. It's a book that is probably slightly different to this one, but one that I'm really looking forward to starting. So I'll certainly post some updates. I'll post some book reviews or a video book review after that. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the positive comments and. Um, yeah, do let me know your thoughts on um, on Brightstorm and your thoughts on the video. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like watching what I'm doing, please subscribe. It's great. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys.